Hey, what's up guys? So today I might teach you how to uh, use displacements. Now displacements you can see in people's work all the time and I've also used them in my work and they're a really easy way of making the simplest shapes look really interesting in just a few clips. And uh, you know, displacement maps are just, you know, these like black and white with the like race scale um, images, be of anything really and you just apply them to your geometry and they'll, you know, displays still like actually move within the geometry and you create these like really interesting shapes. I mean, this image is literally just a plane with the displacement map attached to it and, uh, you know, you get these uh, different like heights and stuff. So it's really cool and uh, that's what I'll teach you how to uh, do today. So open up Cinema 4D and we're gonna turn in the sphere. I might increase the segments because uh, the more segments you have, the better your displacement map looks. Now I'm just going to use this plugin called Magic Preview so we can see what is going on. I might make a new material. Uh, I might make my sphere an edible first. Make a new material. Turn on displacement and I might add in my displacement map. Now I uh, use this program called Chase Placement. It's a free program that you can download from the internet. It, it's for Windows, Maps, Linux, and uh, it creates these 8K displacement maps for you. And they have, you know, different variations of what you can do. It's super easy to use. Um, you can, like turn things on and off, just with a click the button and uh, you make these really interesting shapes. So I just made one of the default ones just for the sake of this tutorial. So I opened up uh, Cinema 4D and I, might and I loaded up the image I made, Chase Placement. I might turn on sub poly Displacement and I'm gonna apply this to my sphere. And ta-da, we have our displacement map and it looks like you know, Star Wars, you know, that star, um, you know, sphere. So we create this really interesting shape in just a few seconds. I'll also teach how to do this in, I, we made this in the standard render. I'll also teach how to do an Octane because it's just a few steps. And uh, things look better than Octane in my opinion. Sorry about it. All right, so I'm gonna close out Magic Preview and I'm gonna open up the Octane Live Viewer. Turn this on, and I'm gonna make an octane material. I'm gonna make a diffuse material and apply it to my sphere. I might open up my diffuse and go into the node editor. Uh, just see, I make this a little bit bigger. Um, now I might add a displacement and a image texture. I'm going to connect the displacement to the displacement, obviously, and I might connect the image texture to the, the displacement. So my image texture, I'll load up the uh, displacement map that I made, just say no. And as you can see, it applied the displacement to my uh, um, sphere in Cinema 40, but as you can see, this is very, you know, like, low poly, very like low res looking. So what you have to do is go into the displacement uh, tab and where it says level details is 256, which is like fine if you're making like a video game in the 90s, but this is 2018 baby, so we want 8K. So change to 8K and oh yeah, you these super nice and now this looks like Star Wars The Last Jedi and not, uh, what was the first Star Wars? Oh, New Hope. It doesn't look like the New Hope. Okay, and, uh, you know, you can change the amount you want. I mean, you go too crazy, this is on the bonkers. And it will probably crash your computer, so I don't recommend doing bonkers. I usually keep my amounts, like, in the 20 like range because that's good enough for me 
So, uh, that's pretty much all there is to the Space Maps. Um, you make your own image, you know, Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, I'll also show you how I did for uh, my 36 days of type image, which was uh, this like Mondrian uh, uh, influence, you know, nine. So uh, this is just, this is literally just a plane as you, as you can see, it just says plane. Um, and I'll open up my material that I use. So, as you can see, I have my chase placement thing in the displacement. Um, I also added a just like a fingerprint like texture in my bump map to give it a little bit of you know detail, extra detail. I put it on like super low, so you probably um, wouldn't even notice it. I could just. Um, uh, I don't even know if you can even tell, but I can tell, so I like it. And, um, I took the chase placement map I had in, uh, in the displacement, and I brought it into Photoshop, and I, you know, colored the different, you know, uh, rectangles, and, uh, I used that as my diffuse, so, yeah, I mean, this is super easy, and, uh, yeah, the space map maps are super easy. So I hope you learned something out of this. Part two, the After Effects edition. Now I'm using the exact same chase placement material that I was using before in Cinema 4D. So into After Effects. And I'm gonna change it to, you know, 25%. This is like 8K, it's huge. I don't need it to be that huge. Now I'm just making a new solid. So press Command or Control Y. Black solid, just change it to meter. Yeah, I'm gonna turn off the chase placement so we don't see it. And I might apply trap code meter to this layer. Now, as you can see, it's just the default geometry. So we're gonna change that. So I might make this change the size X and Y to 800 by 800. So we can actually see what's going on. And we're gonna go down into the shader. Uh, Actually a library and down to the fractal and we're turning off the frequency because we don't need to bother that we just want this it's basically like a plane in cinema 40 and we want to add our you know displacement map or in the in the, the amplitude layer as trap code meter calls it so it's just gonna load up our displacement map and uh as you can see it's yeah it looks super ugly there's not that many details that's because the amplitude is, you know, way too low. So we change to something like 800. You get like lots of details and stuff. But you still can't really see what's going on. That's just our setting search too low. So I want to change to vertices to like 100 by 100. And the higher your vertices are, like the more detail that you're gonna get. So, but don't change them too high because you'll crash your computer and, I don't know, you'll be sad and upset. Now we want to get these kind of like retro like 80s look. So I might change my draw in the shader tab to wireframe. And oh yeah, start, it's starting to get that kind of like outrun, you know, retro uh, look. I might change set and pass also to wireframe because I just want wireframes and wireframes. I might change the line size like 0.5. So I think wireframes look better when they have a, a shorter thing thickness. Alright, so this is like pretty good so far. Um, I might change the Tesla to watts, because we're working in right, rectangles, not triangles. Um, then I might change the bend to 0.3. As you can see, that like bends it to like kind of like a cylinder, and we want to make it more like a sphere. So we're also going to change the bend Y. To the sphere, no, oh, yeah, we're starting to get this like really cool kind of like planets uh, look, and um, you know mirrors in 3D, so you know you can like rotate it and shit. You know, uh, you can also change it, the the Z position, 
and uh, I want to get this kind of cool like death, like ominous like death uh, looking thing. So I change it to red. Damn, looking pretty cool. And uh, and, uh add the repeater. So you make like uh three. I mean, since I made three of these, make like three planets and stuff. And oh yeah, that looks so awesome. You know, and change the X and then like the Y and also the Z. And then there's like death. And uh, mine change the position Y so you can see more of it. And I'm just gonna increase these so they're not like right on top of each other. And, uh, yeah, damn, this is something pretty sick. So, uh, this is pretty much all of mine cover and mirror. I just meant, like, really playing around with the settings, you know, using different displacement maps and stuff. You know, these are like, really cool, like, sci-fi looks, but, uh, you know, I've also used, uh, displacement maps for, for this, which is, like, more, like, organic, you know, painting feel. So, um, there's honestly, like, so many different uses for displacement maps. I really just encourage, you know, going out there, you know, changing, like, a random, like, picture to, like, black and white and seeing how it affects your geometry. It's being really powerful. It's a super simple way of being your most basic, you know, squares and circles looking really cool in just a matter of seconds. So, yeah, that's with displacement maps. I hope you learned something today. Um, let me know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's any, like, critiques and stuff or any questions, just, like, leave them to me in the comments. And, uh, follow, follow me on all social media. I'm at Laura Parat on everything. That's the benefits of having a really uncommon last name, because I'm the only Laura Parat out there as also an animator. So, yeah. Alright, see you next time.